So we also need to the the Okay. 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 Yeah, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, everybody. She will start the next lecture. Next, I would like to invite uh, Professor Aisawa Patani from uh, uh, Kajamata University, Indonesia. Uh, the title of his uh, tech lecture is uh, Technological Innovation of Disaster Mitigation and Implementation of Marcher Disasters. The uh, thank you, Professor Wang. Uh, so today, uh, I'd like to discuss with you uh, a little bit different approach because I try to uh, focus on socio-technical approach on disaster risk management. So I, uh, I'm from civil engineering but uh, I also work with a lot of uh, sociologists, psychologists in order to develop this system. Uh, today I will talk about two things. The first one is uh, 
uh, I'm discussing the technological innovation on disaster mitigation. The second one is about the uh, multi-disaster early warning systems. Well, I took a picture last year uh, in the headquarter of uh, this UNESCO chair. It is right there that the team is improving the relationship between new environment and society through education and research on new environmental disaster reduction. So this is the team. So you can see we have a uh, new environment here, the society, and also education and research. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will discuss first about geo-environmental disaster of Earth, and then the disaster risk management, the support to SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and then how to shift the paradigms to focus on DRR, and then the international standard for multi-disaster early warning system and also the technical innovation. I will copy all of my material to you. I'm ready to write. I will copy it. So, uh, Frank just explained that we have the uh, atomic plates and most of the disasters usually happens along the plate boundary here. So we have like the ring of fire and this red color is are the volcanoes coming from New Zealand, the Pacific Islands and then going to uh, east part of Indonesia, Philippines, Japan and then the west coast of America. Uh, and then this is the location of uh, epicenter. You can see uh, in Nepal there are so many, it's very crowded here, also in Indonesia, Japan, uh, that the location of shallow earthquakes from 1964 to 2006. And the location of uh, uh, large natural hazards just at the location of that same uh, white color show less victims, and then uh, red color show uh, victims more than uh, 1,000 as well. So uh, this one, the triangle show the uh, volcanoes, and then the uh, circle is the earthquake, and uh, rectangles is the uh, for the landslide. So you can see the location is just at the plate to the here, and also to the right. Uh, we have a lot of, if we talk about natural hazard, we have fast flood. This is in India, fast flood. Also, a lot of uh, problems like this in Indonesia, the Gulf And then tsunami. This is in Aceh, then my Kurusatu, my hometown, when I was born here. Uh, this is uh, before and after. So, uh, that was very bad because I was studying in Tokyo at the time. With my brother, and then my father also lose most of his land because of this. Just disappeared. This is in Sanda. This is just in the capital of Indonesia. We have the flood problem. Uh, just last month, we have a very big flood with uh, nearly 300 years of critical period. That's very, very bad. Yeah. Uh, we have also landslide like this, lahar flow. Uh, downtown at Jakarta, the ground, we also have this is in Lombok. So, what is uh, the relationship between disaster risk management and uh, sustainable development goals? But all of the uh, governments all over the world, they should incorporate their development plan with these SDGs. So, among 17 of SDGs, 10 of it is cross related to our subject here, disaster risk management. For example, you can see here sustainable cities and communities, and also for innovation and infrastructure. And you may see also there is the poverty here, no hunger. You can see later on the, the reason. So we have 17 sustainable development goals uh, where. Uh, 10 of the 17 SDGs is strongly related to uh, disaster risk management. So, we need to establish the rule of disaster risk reduction as a core development strategy in order to reach the SDGs. So, what can we do? Usually, we focus on two uh, efforts. 
the first one just to integrate the disaster risk reduction into sustainable development and the second one is to invest our money to protect the next generation from disaster the first thing is to integrate this drr into our sustainable development plan the second one is to invest what is happening if we don't do anything in 2015 uh, more than 260 billion US dollars our annual average goes into disaster. But in uh, the next 15 years, after 2015, 2013, then we double if we, we don't do anything to, for investment or to integrate the DRR into our develop, sustainable development study. So, this is one example. It's very sad to say that people falling into poverty from site and disasters. After the two, 2010 Pakistan floods, more than 30%, 35% of the victims fall into poverty. Uh, after Cyprus Highland in the Philippines, 2013, more than 23% of the uh, infected population fall into poverty. And then the impact is not uh, similar between the developed countries and developing countries. For example, it's not affect so much for Japan or the United States, but it's affect our country, Indonesia, Nepal, and other developing countries. That's why this is one important statement that disasters can be real hard earned development plans and progress. We can put disaster can change our plan or change our effort when we try to uh, develop. So this is one map of natural hazard uh, skill this one. So how about in Indonesia? Uh, the red color show the uh, zero equip. The yellow one is the uh, hospital, less than 30, uh, 70 kilometers, and uh, uh, this one is more than 70 kilometers of the center. So at this moment, our uh, capital is located here in Jakarta. And now we should invest a lot of money to move our capital from Jakarta to Penajam. With less, maybe there is the different trust fully defined by SSB city, but now our capital is moving from here to this one. Maybe like uh, uh, in the US, we have the economic center like New York, and then uh, the capital is in Washington. So this is what. Positive impacts, so we have uh, fertile soil, beautiful scenery, and many mineral contents. But we also go to geological disaster. How about volcanoes? Just like what Frank says, we have 129 active volcanoes. And just now, uh, Frank uh, uh, was discussing about the volcanoes here in Hong Kong, in Rijani, and uh, Solon in Naya. Uh, but we work a lot here in Malawi, Central Java. This is my university. Bajaman University is located in this country. The two plates of Malawi. So there is one question to all of us, because we are scientists. Uh, there are so many disaster risk management research, but still many socio-economic laws. Why? So our challenge is how to apply research, science, and technology for the life so we can do. So like putting science into practice. So that's our challenge, as the scientists. Uh, let's take a look on the disaster circle. It's the simple one. Um, I think most most of us are working on the left side, the green color, starting from prevention, mitigation, and preparation. But when disaster occur, and then the army, and then the civil defense, and all other against civil work here, and then we move to rehabilitation and reconstruction, and finally we come back to our area. Most of us as scientists, we work uh, on the left side. So uh, this is another disaster circle. Disaster risk management effort is here before disaster occur. And after disaster, we have the emergency response stage. And afterward, disaster risk management is coming in order to build back better, safer, and more sustainable. So I will talk a lot about early warning. Where is it? It's just 
here before this has happened. So we try to also do some training for a uh, certain rescue team and we try to improve the leadership, management, coordination, everything before the disaster. But a big problem that the media exposure is very large, so many during the emergency response. So we have less less uh, uh, media involvement during our activities here before this happened. So that's a big problem. Okay. Then uh, we come with another question. I think uh, this picture was taken by my wife after 2006 in Jakarta earthquake. Uh, she was a medical doctor, the leader for uh, disaster response team at the Madrid University. What, what should we do? Should we focus on the response, which is like 100% of the house has just collapsed after the earthquake in one particular village? This one is the most in Bantu. That means no more, but we still need to pay every Friday. And then, or also, we focus on rehabilitation and construction. This is what we call as the uh, Pelicabis house. It was, uh, there is the balloon inside, and we put the uh, reinforced steel. And then, after we put the uh, mortar here, after two weeks, we reduce the balloon size, balloon, we move to another house. So, it is the uh, earthquake. Resistant houses, but a lot because the, the this village was buried by a big landslide uh, up up here. So we have to this now. What should we do? Should we focus on this? So this is the most important slide of my uh, my discussion today. It's very important. This is what is happening now. Uh, I visited Palu ten years ago. You know Palu, a big landslide. A big earthquake, tsunami, and liquefaction in Palu, Central Sulawesi. I ask, how much money do you, do you allocate for PRR every year? They say that it's about 40,000 US dollars per year. So that's very small money. What, what, what? Uh, what do you do with that money? They say that it's for uh, paying for the electricity, gases or uh, going somewhere to do some socialization. So the activities for VRR is just socialization, talk and talk. But don't worry, sir, they say, if disaster happens in this area, we have 300,000 US dollars. They call it as the on-call budget. If disaster happens, they can take the budget. If no disaster, the budget will go for the next year. So this is what happens at a time. The reduction is very small. Readiness also, but response is very big. Everybody will spend a lot of things for response. And then when we come to the recovery, it's coming smaller again. So what is the meaning by resilience? Resilience is when we manage this four component of art, reduction, readiness, response, and recovery into a professional, uh, proportional way. So the overlapping here, between these four components, that is what we call as resilient. So we try to put focus on the other so not only on emergency response. But the problem, the humans, human beings like to invest something and get the benefit as soon as possible. This is not going to happen here. So the recent option is complex, difficult, and takes much longer to see the result. Maybe not us. But our future, maybe children, grandchildren, they, they are the ones who will get the benefit from our investment today. So that's a problem. So then we try to shift the paradigm in order to reach this balance between these four components. So we try to change the focus from response to reduction. And then from hazard, we try to focus on the risk, how to reduce the risk. And then from single mandates to integrated planning, we try to give forth all of the multidisciplines to work with us together. And from centralized into increased local government and community responsibility. I think uh, Julie told me that she's working on that. We call the community also uh, on such service management. So uh, this is the 
the problems that has been presented by my colleague, Professor Vigorina in the Shanghai 2015. We have a full community awareness and preparedness. We have uncontrolled and mismanagement. And technical like innovation is still low. And also we have lack of socio-entrepreneurial approach in the RR. So we need a more integrated planning for disaster risk reduction. Let's see, this is the concept. So all of us today may be coming from engineering, geologists, natural sciences. But in fact, if we talk about disaster risk management, we need to involve everything, infrastructure, technological innovation here, social science, health science, research and education here, emergency management, everything. So, for example, this is the land use spatial planning. I will show two examples for you. The first one is spatial planning. The second one is about law enforcement. Let's see the first one, spatial planning. So, so. This is why Frank and also Julie and Patrick, our colleagues, they came to Jakarta so many times because of we are having this problem in Jakarta. You can see uh, in the north we have the volcanic eruption here, lava flow, and then pyroplastic flow, and going down to the hard flow, all uh, pyroplastic material flowing down. And then we have also the drought here, no water during dry season, and we have also landslide potential, the green one, and we have also flood problem, and the tsunami, and we have earthquake also because the uh, the fault is moving from here going up. So this is what we call a city of disaster. <laughs> our city. and our university is just located here, and our international airport is now here. So we need to yeah, prepare yourself from tsunami if something happens in our new international airport. This is, for example, for spatial planning. Okay. I will show you one another thing uh, related to law enforcement. This is in Jakarta, our capital in Jakarta. In 1930, during Dutch colonialism, we have more than 1,000 small lake or port. More, more than 1,000 port for for retentive basin in order to manage the floods not coming flow together down to the uh, town slip that they will uh, uh, intercept inside the they small homes or small lake. We have 1,000. Nowadays, we have less than 200 because of the development, because of the pressure of the new building, shopping mall, everything. So from 1,000 small lakes going down to 200. And this is what happens of uh, one collapse of one of that small lake. We call it Chikujitu. This is before the collapse. This is after the collapse in 2009. Yeah, this is the Sikudindu, the collapse, and this is the catchment area, only 309 hectares, that's more. And this Sikudindu has another uh, brother and sister nearby, also dangerous for uh, fast flood disasters. So this is before collapse, this is after collapse, you can see this spillway. So this Sikudindu, but if you see, it's like a, a small, there's a small, lake with 1 billion cubic meters of storage and then the Dutch uh, government construct a small uh, embankment on the downstream in order to increase the uh, storage capacity. Uh, the, uh, in 1930 it has 31 hectares of inundation area but now it's less than 20. Now it's when it collapsed. Uh, on the left side and right side here, left side and right side of this, we have the intake channel for irrigation purpose. But now we cannot, cannot find any very field or anything to to send the water, so it just closed. There's no more any field there. So then uh, it's collapsed and killed more than 100 people. Uh, this is the spillway before collapse. Uh, this is from this side and this other side here. This house is the same house but different uh, color. Owned by the police. Uh, and why they construct the house two story like this? Because 
in the, in the afternoon, they can see it, drink it with coffee, and see the beauty of the lake. That's why they need two story building. There are a lot of buildings like this. They don't have any owner, ownership certificate, but they get the electricity, they get the uh, phone line, yeah, but they don't have, uh, they get also the, uh, what we call it, the ID card. But the ones they don't have is the ownership certificate because this is located just at the embankment of that uh, small lake. And this is the steep channels, very small, for one million cubic meters of water there, very small. And this one is used to be 11 meters, but then reduced by this small bridge, so it's just nine meters length. Okay, this is what happened. Uh, after the collapse, here, this one is the electricity cable. So the electricity company, electricity company dig uh, that embankment and put the electricity cable there, half meters below the level. And uh, you can see, for example, this one. I saw this one during the uh, conference in UNESCO. This is the embankment. You see, this is the embankment. And this is the houses. They dig for foundation, they put a septic tank there, and and there is no textbook, no guidance, no standards that allow you to construct a house on the embankment. But it's happened. So this is what, what we call as the law enforcement. We need to inform law enforcement in order to manage all of this and then to protect the people. And you know what? 100 people is not coming from this surrounding area because they know the symptom just have some depression, they know it's going to collapse. They try to inform everybody, so the people surrounding that area, they survive. But the people down there, because it's more than two, three meters, uh, with eight meters per second of the velocity, just destroy the dumps. So the people there, speak. Uh, there are a lot of people. Okay. Now I'm coming to the uh, early warning system. Early warning system. Uh, this early warning system also involves a lot of uh, multidisciplinary approach. Uh, this is my publication. You can download it online uh, related to early warning systems. We go for 10 years of early warning system, and finally, we try to make uh, uh, develop an international standard. And also, uh, our work in line with Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, uh, especially here, uh, we have to invest something in disaster risk reduction and also try to uh, enhance the disaster preparedness for effective response. That's our mission. Uh, last year, uh, this is two years ago, this is last year, we are invited to this one, to the uh, UNIC meeting in Geneva. So they invite, they invite the, I'm the team leader for ISO development to talk in front of 148 countries to discuss what can ISO do to reach the uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. So we develop uh, a five ISO. The first one, this is what we call as the ISO Guidelines for Multi-Disaster Early Warning Systems. It's published in 2019. Yeah. And then the second one, we have ISO for Landslide Early Warning Systems. This is published two years ago in Sydney. And the other ones we are working now uh, for flood, volcanic eruption, and also tsunami early warning system. So for volcanic eruption, perhaps I will invite uh, friends to join the team during our meetings. So we have another meetings in June in Berlin. Uh, maybe you know about uh, ISO 9000 series or ISO 14000 series. That usually uh, created by developed countries. So this is the first ISO come from the developing countries. That's ISO, but only has a only one. Let's see what is inside this ISO. Uh, so we also develop national standard, but we know about that. The most important thing is international standard. You can see the guideline for implementation of community-based landslide early warning system. The key point is community-based early warning systems. We also develop the multi-disaster. So first I will discuss about the 
lands like background, it is difficult to relocate the community living in vulnerable area. Come to the particular village, which is prone for lands like, and ask them to relocate their house. They will say that it's a small year, nothing happens after 30, 40 years, so why should I move to another area? So that's also a matter of step of the first one. So we try to uh, introduce the most effective PRR effort with the community partners by implementing only one system. But please keep in our mind that only one system will not stop the disaster at all. It just try to uh, monitor, try to uh, inform us, element at risk, the people living there, that it is dangerous. You need to relocate yourself or you need to evacuate. So you just monitor the situation, but not stop the flood. It will not stop the landslide or tsunami. Tsunami will happen, but we know beforehand to do appropriate action. Objective is to integrate the technical and social network, and then community awareness and preparedness, and also community empowerment. The user will be all of us, international organizations, central and local government, private sectors, and local community. I remember that uh, five years ago, UNDP tried to uh, invite our university to install landslide only warning systems in uh, in Moleste, in Moleste. But UNDP asked, uh, "Is your system is standardized by ISO or compiled with ISO standard?" I said, "There is no standard yet about only warning system." So just like uh, Professor Nakamura will discuss about the base isolation. For example, we say qualitative, qualitatively. This building should be strong, resistant to earthquake. So that quantitative. What is quantitative one? Uh, you need to design with 2,500 liters per year. You need to design the uh, steel reinforcement there, and then the uh, strong of the concrete, everything. So that's the standard. So if somebody say that I implement a new warning system, so is that the real new warning system, or it is or so we use this concept, we call it as the fourth key element of community-based early warning system published by UNISDR. So usually we know early warning system as the sensors putting at the source of the disasters and then the sirens, but in fact early warning system is complex, more than that. For example, we need to do the risk knowledge, risk assessment, we need to assess where is the location of landslide uh, that going to happen? Our equipment is limited. We cannot put all of the exosometers or rain gates everywhere. But we need to choose the most dangerous area. And then geologists should go to the field and make some in, do the assessment in order to decide, okay, this is the area that is very dangerous, 100 houses down there. This is what we call as risk model. The second one, you need to communicate the risk with the local people, local government, the industry, the researchers, that this is the dangerous area. What should we do? Yeah. Uh, do you understand the risk and warning? Or it is clear for you, so we need to communicate it. And the third one, which is what we call as monitoring and warning devices. So this is all the equipment, sirens, everything. And then the, the last one is the most important, response capability. When we hear the sirens, what should I do? Should I walk? Should I run? Turn right? Turn left? Can I bring my refrigerator with me? Or what should I do? Who is responsible to evacuate myself? That's response capability. So in case for landslide, we develop with seven subsystems. So if you say that you develop only one system, the question is, if you do this risk assessment, where is the result of risk assessment? That that location is the most dangerous area. Do you establish the disaster preparedness organization? This means who is the leader there? Who uh, manage what? The organization should be established. That according to ISO, not myself. The third one, do you have the evacuation map and route? And then do you have the standard operating procedures or do you have the monitoring warning devices and have you done the evacuation drill once a year? And 
do you have any commitment if you install the equipment? I remember all of us have the experience to install the early warning equipment. Yeah? And the question is who will operate and who will maintain that system? Should be local government. Allocate their money to maintain the system. Otherwise, it's not the world system. And also, we need to disseminate and communicate all of this with the locals and also the local customers. So, this is the concept. Let's see one by one. Risk assessment is not necessarily only technical survey. You are, most of you are geologists here. Yes, you work here. Technical survey, geological conditions, to determine land size, acceptability, and scale of growth. But you need also conduct to conduct an institutional survey, you need to understand uh, how about the structure of this period. Uh, who is responsible? Is there any previous organization established for disaster risk management? So you need to explore that one. And also you need to do the social survey. You need to understand the culture, the behavior of the people in order to understand or in order to formulate the best approach in that condition. And then uh, maybe this is the local this is local people, not our student. This is true, it's our student, right? And then uh, maybe this is this is local people, not our student. This is true, it's our student, right? And you see this is that's what by the local number of houses, this is location where this is the direction where to evacuate, this is the track. Exosometers, we took one exosometers here, another one here, and then this is the school, this is the assembly point, and this would go to three kilometers to the temporary shelter. This is drawn by the local. Where is the river and where is the dangerous area? And then we disseminate yeah, with the simple methods with the local uh, what what they should do, and also we try to uh, identify the key people. Yeah, and finally, we can have this kind of this is just example. In the ISO, this right is just as an example, which means it is not mandatory to have this kind of organization. But you should have the chair here, and then the coordinator for several uh, divisions security, logistic, first aid, mass evacuation, and monitoring. Local authorities are responsible to monitor this. Uh, Organization and this one is the organization example. And then development of evacuation road and map. The maps need to be very simple. I will show you one example. This map. This is a very funny map. Right? Because the north direction is going down. The people think that the source area for landslide is at the south. They don't want to go up to the north. They want to go down. So we rotate the north. We rotate the map, and finally the north is going down. This is dangerous area at the south. And if something happens, they should run and go to the north. Uh, this is the crack, big crack here. This is exosometers, steel meters, uh, surface things, and we have also the siren here and the uh, say the uh, rainfall gauge and uh, a number, for example, 74. You can see 74. This is the post fault of 74. So we should go to the right, not to the left. So every house we put the number. This is the example. Uh, this one is called flood. Yeah, because flood is a special uh, disaster. And you can see this is the dangerous area in the by flood. This is a Bengawan Solo River, the biggest river in eastern Java, with 40 million population in that one single province. A very big population there. So they should go to this area. This is safe, safe area for evacuation. This is inundated area. So if you stay here, you should go up here, stop here. And the government will supply the logistics to that location. So this is with developed with the Ministry of Public Works. And then uh, SOP. Take this one. We need to discuss with them. The SOP should be very, very simple. Uh, last year, during this uh, course, I showed the landslide SOP, but now a flood SOP. 
Uh, let's all zero main routine activities. We need to coordinate uh, so the, the, the organization should have a coordination. Uh, population census, you need to understand how many people live in this particular uh, village. And then dissemination of information. And this is person in charge. This is During level number one, caution, what we should do is uh, receive the signal from the radio or television or uh, direct contact from the uh, uh, local government. You check the data and you prepare for evacuation. This is the people in charge. During level number two, uh, the water is coming up, so you need to evacuate the vulnerable group. It means the baby, pregnant woman, sick person, you should evacuate them first. But during the level three, everybody should evacuate. Uh, I will jump to this. One. Sorry, this is in class Indonesia. So we, we try to adopt this then SOP into one poster like this. Uh, this is level green level means level one. You get the report, and this uh, head of village then prepare for everything. Uh, how many people sleeping there, and then what what they have now. And then the second level is they try to uh, put all the transmission up because this is integrated flood, not fast flood, and then they evacuate the uh, old people like this. And uh, level number three, uh, everybody should be evacuated. This is very strange, right? Because they don't want to evacuate if it is not up to their limit. Yeah. So we have the, we call it as the uh, cross green cross team uh, approach, uh, because usually if we talk with the community, 60 people, and then the old generation will talk and talk, but young people will keep silent. Just like today, we have uh, some questions from old generation, not from the young one. So we make a cross screen. Cross game is like this. For example, I will try to uh, uh, implement it now to all of you. If it is, you say yes, please take your pen up. It means yes, right, right. If it is no, just put it like this. Okay? But you should answer together. Yeah. The question is, if earthquake happen, earthquake happens, I'm going to run away to the first floor and go out of this, this building. Wait a moment. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. You should take it together. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, you see, no, 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 yes, right? So I will ask the young generation, why that you are not going to evacuate outside? What so are you going to do? We should not panic. We should not panic in that moment. We have to do our safety trust. We can go on with the, the experience or something like that. Yeah. We can hide ourselves below the table. But are you sure that this table is strong enough for <laughs> preventing yourself from falling things, something? You see, so I can invite everybody to talk, even young people, because he, you say yes, why? Then they will talk. So in that way, I ask the local people, uh, if the water is up to the key, this one, this means that in the road, the flood inundation is here, 15 centimeters, will you evacuate? Nobody say yes. No, they will stay at home. Okay, if the flood is here, up to your knee, 50 centimeters. Will you evacuate? All of the men say yes. The woman say no. I ask the men. I ask the woman why? Then you say no. You know what, sir? This man is happy with the flood. They have the holiday, not going to work, smoke the cigarette, and then wait that we serve the meal for them. But for me, I should take care of my uh, uh, my mother my children, my baby, it's very hard for me. I will not evacuate when it is just here. But I will evacuate if the water is here. So all the men say, yes, we will evacuate here. We are happy. No work. Yeah, only day because of the force major. So it is very hard to, to put this one. This is not exactly on the knee, but it's a bit hard. Otherwise, they don't see no more. We don't want to evacuate. 
Don't forget when you evacuate, you can evacuate your livestock because this is inundation, right? But don't forget to bring to feed them or they will die after one week or another one. No, nothing. And then what should you bring? This one. So this is this is the SOP. This is what should you bring. And who is the vulnerable people? And you should follow the instruction from the officer. You should see the evacuation map. And finally, should go there yeah. um, to the evacuation This is it just the example how we work in flood all over Indonesia. So then, uh, next is for equipment. Well, this is our field. I don't want to discuss about this. We will not about this equipment. And we install this one and we try to find the highest risk with the largest number of people affected. We put the equipment there. And in case of landslide, we just put two. So this is ISO. I don't want that the uh, uh, developing countries have difficulty to implement that one. So we put there, it's just, this is in ISO, I copy this. To monitor, the monitoring device installed to support the one system to include the mandatory one is rail gates and surface deformator, deformation meter. It can be like so meters, kilometers, or anything that monitor the ground movement. But you can also, to improve the accuracy, you can use also others. But the mandatory one, in order to compile with ISO standard, you need to install that too. How the system works? We have the extensometers, kilometers, uh, upstream. It will send the, uh, the data to the repeaters here and send to the office. And the office will warn the people about the or not. So uh, this is what we have done. Uh, this is in uh, 2018. Last year I showed in this course, I showed this video figures. But in 2019, we worked for the 27 locations of flood all over Indonesia. And also we have more than 24 landslides. So many. So finally, we installed at uh, 32 provinces among 34 provinces in Indonesia in 120 municipality and it's also installed in Myanmar, this, this system and every point means seven subsystems not only the equipment but also there will be the uh, disaster preparedness team risk assessment is there, SOP is there, evacuation map is there and also evacuation drill and also the commitment who will be responsible for each point and here also the blue color show that we go with the private company. And because of it is become an ISO two years ago, it is now installed in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, in uh, New Zealand, and also in Argentina. That that's standard. We not the system. Everybody can develop our own system, but try to compile with the ISO in order to reach the uh, best goal for our effort. This is one example. In 2015, only one system saved 100 people in Ajin side. So we are trying to do the uh, evacuation drill at 8 o'clock in the evening. But 2 o'clock in the noon time, the siren starts working. And then two hours later, the second level coming. And finally, at 6 o'clock in the evening, we decide to evacuate everybody. The people still think that that is the exercise, but it's the real thing. So this is, you can see, the exercise became a real evacuation activity. So the uh, landslide in this first flood destroyed 100 houses, uh, among with uh, 10 houses totally destroyed, but no victims because they get the war warning from uh, this system. This is from National Disaster Management Authority. So uh, this is the, I, I tried to put where that we can work, uh, we as the uh, researcher and also local authority. The left side, sorry, the, the, the left side, this is where we can work. We as the uh, academia, scientists, uh, or research center, we can work here. 
We can install all of the monitoring devices. We have the real-time monitoring data. We can inform to the focal points, local leaders, local community. But just to inform and get ready for evacuation. We cannot order the people to evacuate. We are not the local authority. We are researchers. And then the data is coming to the local disaster management agency. They will coordinate with all of that, police, army, Red Cross, and then coming to the disaster by partners organization and finally evacuate home. In case if the, the movement of the sensors uh, inform that the uh, dangerous is a very high dangerous level, you can go directly to the red one and red one will go directly to the local engineer. So this is the system. So our work is on the left side. We call it uh, the flow of information. And the right side is the command system. Somebody should order the people to evacuate. So yes, uh, the rest of the Technological innovation. So this is in, in our university. We get a lot, lot of uh, This is with 90% of local material. We try to make it simple and cheap. Uh, the cheapest one is 100 US dollar. And the uh, uh, the most expensive one that we installed in Freeport, the biggest uh, exploration company, is about uh, 50,000, no, 5,000 US dollars for each, uh, each sensor. But this one is maybe around uh, 400 to 500 US dollars. But the cheapest one is 100. So uh, this is the system, this is in monitoring chain Sumatra, so uh, we install the equipment and then uh, it will send the data to the repeater, the repeater to control group, and then it will direct towards the people or it will go to the internet so we can access everything right now. Uh, this is the uh, monitoring data that we have for the meters, millimeter graph, and warning criteria, I will speak this one. And also we are just two friends explain about the lava flow. We also install in several locations the lava flow. If the lava touch this uh, regionally, for example, in another 30 minutes, it will reach downtown of Jakarta. So we can do the simulation. Uh, we use this pendulum previously just like this, touched by the lava coming back. This is pendulum. Uh, but we also put the ultrasonic and also lidar sensor here to monitor the fluctuation of uh, uh, water and the uh, interval camera here and also the radio frequency to send the data. So we have a lot of system. This is for flood. We use the radar system that we installed in 40 uh, districts all over Indonesia. But uh, this is in Monorapi, for example. Well, uh, Monorapi is the most active volcano in Indonesia. We love it. Yeah. But not so big, a yeah, small, small one. For example, this belly is 40 meters deep. Mm -hmm. After the eruption, it just covered. So, so we can use it for uh, building materials and take the sand. Yeah, and then we put also the call camera here to monitor the movement. But this slope is not uh, that stable. And then uh, they have the very intensive uh, sand mining activities. And then uh, this is uh, my master student, and then graduated from Wang Sensei PhD student, Fifty yeah, Sun. He also tried to implement the uh, Japanese method, a model to monitor the fluctuation of groundwater level. We get the rainfall data, and then the groundwater level we can uh, monitor. Uh, the green one is the monitoring groundwater level, and this uh, purple one is the prediction with the simulation. And from there, we use the viscoplastic uh, uh, modeling, and then we import the dashboard and also the sharing systems in order to uh, predict uh, it move or not during the rainfall. If you increase the chromosome level, so this mass movement, uh, how how far it will move, the velocity, and also uh, we are now working with the ongoing project uh, to. Uh, simulate the uh, landslide and the risk flow. This is in uh, geothermal area in Sumatra. Uh, we have the leader before and after the disaster, so this is the source area with 
8 million cubic meters of the deposit material it moved down and then uh, hit this area uh, near the mouth here. Yeah, this is the picture. And then uh, we also try to uh, develop this dear river map. Mr. Hedy spent several times coming to this area and the political condition. And then we implement this uh, numerical model. We use the East governing equation, it's very common. And we use the first one is the hyper concentrated soil liquid mixture flow model by Gasira. And then we also try to enforce the full fluid friction model and also the solid friction model of more color. This one and then try to uh, predict the movement in 2006, it stopped like that. And then it's another movement because 9 million or 10 million cubic meter is hanging uh, around there. It moved again, it will go up, up this uh, uh, simulated one. So uh, we also uh, designed the sabo drums because in Tokyo I was studying for four years in sabo laboratory. But after 15 years of my graduation, I designed my first sabo drum. Not five first, but this third sabo drum we installed there. This is the first sabo drum designed by Indonesia because the money is not coming from the government because if the government then it will go. We usually use the loan from Japan, so Japan will take care of everything. But this one is the national exploration company. So they can discuss everybody to decide and they construct the Sabudam. Maybe next time I will discuss about that Sabudam. The first Sabudam is called Design, Design and Built by Indonesia. So we can put also some uh, uh, soil protection and then run the simulation again. Uh, if we put the Sabudam, no Sabudam, so what? Uh, will happen. Maybe uh, during the field trip, we are going to visit some Sabudam and also the simulation in some office. Okay, this is for example how the Sabudam enforce the direction of the next one. So then, uh, this is for the movie disaster. The movie disaster is this one. Uh, if you implement for tsunami or not earthquake, earthquake is Cannot predict when and where or we but others maybe it is possible. Like for volcanic, uh, some volcanoes we can maybe track and explain in detail. That maybe a few days or few months we, we know that the activity is increased, but sometimes it never erupt, just increase the activities and going down again. So maybe the volcanologist will explain. So this is the uh, five subsystem of multi disaster early warning systems. So, and we also uh, here because for millennia you like to because everywhere you bring your mobile phone. Going to the bathroom, going to shopping, uh, eating. So it is important to install something there. Where where are you now? It is dangerous or not. So we install uh, we develop this one. Uh, uh, care uh, application three. So when when something happens in your area like an earthquake or the potential or heavy rainfall, you will get warning. Uh, so that that's it. And then for volcanic eruption, we also get log. Well, the poster is not like this because if we distribute the poster like this, the local maybe will throw it away. So we put the calendar down here the calendar so at least they will use that one all the year because they need the calendar try to go this is all organic just like you said yeah no panic don't panic lock your door and then follow the instruction this is everything this is in english what should be free not more than 20 kilograms so put something in your head because of the flying ash is dangerous and also put the masker here and then this one need one month to put the red cross there because we discuss with the locals and they say that no we should bring our livestock with us and then finally the young man just graduated from primary school and he said no we should not bring this one so we take that that one we bring the key person from this village to another village you talk with them if I talk, I need another two months to convince them that this, this is important. 
So uh, most of them will talk like this. Yeah, usually. I'm as stupid as you are, but we have this one. So again, the very strong uh, opening speech of the uh, uh, local key, key person from other feelings. So from this village, and we bring to another village. So that's how we work yeah, around the country. So we try to invite the local also to use the socialization to Okay, uh, that's all, but uh, we still have time. Uh, can I show two minutes? Two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'm an engineer, but also I work with the kindergarten teachers. We developed this one for Marambi. Uh, Frank, maybe have you seen this one? We developed the uh, storybooks for kindergarten children. Yeah, like they come to their grandma, their Marambi, behind this Marambi. And then the grandma tells the story that Marambi then her up. And then uh, she becomes scared with his brother, her brother. Uh, during an option, what will happen? And then uh, you should cover your mouth yeah, because of the white ash. And you need to follow the evacuation rule. And then don't worry because uh, volcanic, volcanic material is also make the surrounding area become very volatile. You can have a lot of things, economical point of view, and also for building materials. And finally, you should uh, uh, live in harmony with the uh, nature because it will uh, save your life. Well, this is for kindergarten children. Uh, we also make for the uh, COVID, for the uh, secondary school or high school, the COVID, our, uh, yeah, in, in Indonesia. Yeah. Here, you can see this in Indonesia, yeah? That's like Bella. Yeah, yeah usually, uh, yeah, it's like a story, but of course, the young and handsome guys will explain everything. He's the smartest here. Yeah? Where is the guy? Yeah, this guy. Yeah. He explained that Marabi just like what our friends say. So we develop kind of this and work with uh, other disciplines like sociology, psychology, the teachers, and the uh, cartoon, uh, cartoon people uh, that work on the development. Okay, uh, but keep in your mind that I'm a civil engineer. <laughs> just doing this for hobby. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 15 minutes for discussion. Any questions, discussion, comments? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Very, very much information for us. Uh, I just wanted to know about the typology of the houses when you deploy other uh, UIP system. Like, how you prefer to, to, to choose the typology of houses? It's very important for us because we our houses are not so strong to stand on the floor and of course to stand on the volcanic eruptions or such, such kind of thing. So how you evaluate the typology for the evacuation? Yeah. Uh, so this is very important question. Uh, when we work with the people, they don't think disaster mitigation is the solution. They say that no. Uh, the solution is disaster adaptation. What is that? So in this, uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, the government has the money to construct the embankment along the river then to protect the people from the flood, the next given flood. But the people say no, do not consult that one because we need the flood. Because after the flood, flushing the body field, and then the next uh, the next year they will have a, a very a very good harvesting of the bank because it will flush the like a chemical agent everything and another good sedimentation come there. And then they have a good uh, result for their body field. So they don't want to do to have that embankment along the river because they need the flood also. In that way, then we install the 
uh, we can we say it in token the wooden uh, door. So if they are ready, they already uh, take all of the harvest all of the baby and then the flood can come. So we made the flood, the, the flood can come, but under our instruction. So that's what, what we call as the uh, disaster adaptation. And what I have been uh, investigate in the location of flood inundation around this uh, East Java, usually the house elevation is one meter higher than the road. So that's why if the evacuation is here, the house is not inundated here. So the house is going to be usually uh, higher. And inside the house, you can see a lot of central equipment. So in one minute, they can bring the uh, motorcycle and take it up. So they have that system with a platform or something. Yeah. So they put the uh, television up. So they, they they used to live there all of their life. Maybe every five years, three years, they have the flood. Uh, and then uh, for the houses uh, at that location, well, this is inundation, inundated flood, not the first flood. During the first flood, of course, the house will just uh, demolish by the the risk to but in that case we don't we don't discuss it. what we, have, we can do is uh, you know uh, this is the uh, early warning system if you notice the all of the system this is just an entering point entering point when we come to the uh, community they will ask oh okay uh faisal you come here again to talk or you try to uh, give some socialization and be no, no. This time I bring the equipment. You can touch, you can hear, you can operate. But you should have a local organization for this. Then they they try to organize themselves and then they try to do the risk assessment, they try to develop the evacuation map, and finally they realize that the only system will not stop anything. So you need to do the mitigation work. And then they try to do as as uh, as they can. For example, to uh, normalize the drainage systems, yeah, or try to put uh, the uh, manage the waste management, yeah, not to put it uh, in the river. So this is just an entry point, but we can get more impact when we work with the real community. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, please. I would like to ask uh, what kind of information do you usually collect uh, in order to make uh, this computer simulation of uh, flooding or geohazards? And how do you do this kind of simulations? I would like to know. Okay, uh, this is also his expertise, yeah, <laughs> for the simulation. Yes, that's correct. We're going to change, we're going so you need to get at least you can see we have the good topographical map that's the most important for landslide we use lidar this time before and after the earthquake so we uh with the landslide so we know exactly where is the uh, sliding mass and where is how deep is sliding uh, uh, sliding surface and how deep is sliding mass and we need to understand also the uh, property of the moving mass mm -hmm. yeah the cohesion upright cohesion internal friction Fiction, and then the uh, good density and also the water so and then uh, will the, uh, the trees uh, affect the movement of the landslide so all of that information okay thank you any more questions yes Thank you very much, Professor Adani. Very nice presentation and a very good one here. I would like to ask you uh, one question about the non-slide early warning system. Does this system can say the hazard is over? Because the, in case of the earthquake early warning system, everybody knows the main shop is hit over. Well, in case of the non-slide early warning system, Let's say the system say red sand and people evacuated. But luckily, 
the land size, no big land size happen, the system can say the hazard go, you can return to your original home. Yeah. Thank you. This is the first important question I ever hear yeah. from that side. <laughs> yes, for tsunami, this when big earthquake come and tsunami warning is coming, after 30 minutes they should evaluate. Because if there is no tsunami, they should take out the warning so that the search and rescue team would come to that area to, to save the victims because of the previous earthquake. So for tsunami, it's very important to when it starts and when it's off. Yeah. Unfortunately, for last slide, at least the, the equipment that we make, we, we cannot give that information. So what is happening in central Java, uh, uh, eight years ago, um, big sirens, they hear, and they move to the separate area. Four hours after that, big landslide happened. Uh, so there is in SOP it is written that you cannot return back to your house without any permission. Mm. You cannot come. So that that's what we can do. And then the, the researcher or the local authority they will investigate everything. It is okay now, or can they return back to their house? So if it is okay, then they will order the people to return back. So in this case, we combine between the uh, uh, technological sensor and also human sensor, <laughs> sensor also monitor them. One uh, sad story, I should say, 2006, I just uh, six months return back from Japan. Uh, the local people hear the big sound, because the mass move, moves somewhere there, up there, and then they evacuate from their village. One hour after that, they hear as a, you know, the, if we want to pray, and somebody will invite us to come to the mosque. So they hear that one, one, one hour after that, they return back to their uh, village, and one hour after that, big landslide happened. Seventy people killed because of uh, uh, because of that uh, problem. So in that way, we try to develop the SOP that is strongly stated that do not return back to your house if you don't have any permission from the local authority. So in that way, the local authority will try to. Uh, investigate the situation, it is okay, and they can come in back. Or otherwise, they will stay there overnight, and then the local authority will supply for the logistics. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, no? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 
Yeah, you can you Yes. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
What I did was just uh, management. So, uh, I think uh, yes, everything for him. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, good year. Let us gentlemen come and start the first lecture today. The last lecture today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. So, at the beginning, I would like to thank you again for your participation uh, to the University Chair Affairs Group and also for the Sakura Science Program. Uh, actually, the topic of my uh, presentation is the landslide motion simulation and motion mechanism of a landslide triggered by squid. But after that, I consider we should also include landslide triggered by rainfall. Okay? So the context will be a little bit different from the title. Now I'm working in the Center for Disaster Research, uh, for Nature Disaster Reduction Research and Education in Shimura University. And also I'm working in the Department of uh, Science in the Shimura University. So uh, actually, uh, after I graduated from my university, I start the research on the uh, geohazards yeah, for more than, more than 30 years. Yeah. So in uh, this long period, I try to understand this kind of uh, topics. Yeah. At first, for uh, hazards, uh, when, where, and how they occur. Yeah, so this is very really important uh, aspects to, to understand disasters. If we can understand where, when, and how, it means we can fully predict disaster. But actually, it's very difficult, yeah, especially for, for a squid. Yeah. But even for landslides, it's also difficult to, to 
predict it. Okay, so because uh, until now, actually I can, I think nobody can see. We fully understand what kind of a disaster. Yeah, uh, for for all of the disaster. Okay, so, but uh, I think it's easy, a little bit easier for us. Yeah, to understand why. Yeah, before we predict when, where, and how. So we try to understand why. So this uh, means that uh, we should understand the mechanism of the, the, the disaster. Yeah. So I might measure on that slide. So I will try to understand why that slide yeah, uh, moves so long or so fast, something like that. Okay? And uh, based on some uh, knowledge yeah, uh, achieved from this kind of a study, and finally uh, we can understand how to predict it. Okay? So this is the, uh, I try to understand this aspect of the landslide hazards. So the contents of uh, this presentation I think, uh, will be uh, divided into two parts. At first, I will show you some examples of long run out and rapid landslide. Yeah. Why long run out and rapid landslide is so important? Because they can cause bigger disasters. Yeah. If they move over longer, so if we actually we don't know the, the distance, if you build a house there, yeah, the house will be damaged. Yeah, if you build a highway, a road, something like that, yeah, it will also be rebuilt or damaged. So this is a problem. And also for the rapid landslide, yeah, sometimes it's very really rapid, yeah, very rapid. Yeah. Uh, even you understand the landslide is, move, is, is moving, you cannot escape this thing. Yeah. So that is, uh, we call it rapid. Of course, we have a lot of uh, definition for a velocity of landslide. Yeah, something, we, maybe we have a different definition of the rapid. But generally, see, rapid landslide, for me, is a, it's, it's a, it's a rapid. It's a too rapid, too, 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 too fast. People cannot escape from it. So we call it a rapid landslide, okay? So at first, I will show you some uh, examples of this uh, kind of long run out and rapid landslide. First by rainfall, and second by earthquake. Okay, so after that, actually, from this kind of example, uh, this kind of uh, uh, case studies, we uh, can understand why that's like they move for long distance and move for uh, high velocity. Okay, so based on that kind of knowledge, then uh, we divert a last like simulation code. Okay, so I will explain the principle and the models of a last like simulation and uh, then. I will try to apply it to show the uh, the value of this kind of a model and simulation. Okay. So first, for landslide triggered by rainfall, actually, what I want to see yeah, from uh, the, the case study, I found that most of the most of landslide triggered by rainfall, they are in a small scale. Yeah, most of them. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, yeah, even big landslide can be triggered by rainfall. Most of them are in small scale, but they can move for long distance. Yeah, I've generally seen uh, big landslide can move for long distance, longer distance. A small landslide move for smaller distance. But sometimes, yeah, uh, especially for landslide triggered by rainfall, even they are in a small scale, they can move for long distance. So this is quite different. Yeah, it's special. This is uh, extraordinary. So we have to understand why what happened inside. The motion. Okay, so uh, I would like to uh, see a uh, uh, flat study. Actually, we set, we can we have two parts. One is for the stability, for slope stability. Another is for the answer motion. Yeah. So between them is the is the safety or uh, uh, is the is the critical state of the safety. It is the factor of safety is zero point one. Okay. And uh, now uh, my topic is uh, on the is about the failure. Yeah, it means landslide uh, occur. Yeah, maybe triggered by rainfall, maybe triggered by earthquake. But anyway, fail. Yeah, a failure occurring. So after the failure, what will happen? Okay, so this is uh, we talk about this part. Not for the stop, stability. Okay. So uh, I, at first I show some cases. Yeah, this one uh, is the of course is the Harihara landslide on the Degra floor, caused by the rainfall in 1997. In the uh, thousand Japan, in the Kagoshima prefecture, you can see this is the valley. Actually, you can see it everywhere, everywhere. 
discovered a forest that yeah, is very typical in Japan. Yeah. And here you can see, you know, cannot see here. It's a here is a is a valley, the uh, Pisa Valley. And here is a check it out. Just now, a professor Paisa said we designed the first uh, check dam in, uh, in, uh, in in Russia. Okay, in Japan, uh, yeah, it is a typical uh, region to prevent landslide and the flow. So here you can see the they built the sub dam, check dam, uh, at this position of the of the valley. They are trying to stop the flow and landslide, but. Uh, Small landslide, yeah, you can see it's not a not in much scale, yeah. A landslide occurred in the site, and then it uh, moved, moved down to the valley, and then it uh, crossed the check dam, and uh, finally it was it moved for long distance and deposited in the gentle slope, and they buried lots of uh, uh, or destroyed, damaged lots of houses, yeah. So even this kind of a small landslide, yeah, even in this not so densely populated area. It killed uh, 21 percent in the spirit. Yeah, in the spirit. Yeah. So actually, in Japan, we find lots of uh, similar cases. Yeah, in the disaster case, we can find confusion, but confusion is not cannot be uh, cannot completely or cannot uh, uh, fully stop the disaster. So this uh, will be a problem. Okay, but this is the case. Uh, this is the case also far occurred in the same year in the northern Japan, in the Akita prefecture. Yeah, in Akita prefecture. It occurred, you can see, when I said occurred, it's covered by the by the snowfall. Okay, by the snowfall. Actually, this landslide is caused by the snow melting that process yeah, because of the uh, ground water infiltration to the to the landslide, to the to the deeper part of the landslide. Yeah. So fortunately. Cost of a very good prediction based on the monitoring. Yeah. So uh, the people in the downstream area uh, of the landslide have been uh, evacuated from the site. But unfortunately, uh, about the two kilometers below the, 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 the landslide, the downstream area, uh, there are two hot spot hotels. Yeah. They cannot move. Yeah. So the two hot spot hotels. Been, uh, had been completely destroyed and yeah, make a disaster. And then uh, this one is occurred in 1998. Yeah, you can see it's a very small scale. Yeah, it's a very small scale. Uh, different flow. Yeah, uh, actually, in the, in the source area, the site just might be about two meters or three meters in the wider. Yeah, very small scale. But after, after it filled, they moved down along the very narrow valley. And you can see that the dot point, yeah, it shows the uh, rich point of the of the debris flow. So the debris flow entered the house from the window. Yeah, entered the house from the window. After the house, in the case stayed in the science country of facility. Yeah, so the old people yeah, after retire, yeah, they they live in here, yeah, uh, spend their retirement retirement life. But unfortunately, yeah, they don't know. Nobody knows that because uh, the mountain looks very good. Yeah, you can see very steep mountain and looks uh, covered by forest, very nice forest. Yeah, but unfortunately, the debris floor comes up. Yeah, enter the window and build the uh, build the room. So now, found residents yeah, in the facility and be killed. Yeah, so this caused a very big social problem. Yeah, so retirement people want to. Uh, yeah, spend their happy life. Yeah, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the in this facility, but killed by the people. Yeah, so it's a, at that time it was a big social problem. Yeah, and this one, yeah, this one is good. Yeah, it moved uh, for a long distance, but unfortunately, it didn't kill people. Just to destroy the rest party. Uh, the rest party. Uh, rest party. Yeah. So uh, we conduct a very good, very detailed investigation of this land site. We go to the site and uh, uh, it's covered uh, the, the investigation bridge yeah, and uh, observe what happened in the sliding surface to examine the sliding, the, the motion mechanism of that site. Yeah. So we published a paper in uh, engineering geology yeah, on this case. Yeah, and then we'll come back to the another case uh, in uh, Hiroshima. Yeah. So now we are in the Shimane Prefecture. 
in the south part there uh, is the Hiroshima Prefecture, the Shimano Prefecture, and the uh, Hiroshima Prefecture shared the whole yeah, shared boundary to the prefectures. Yeah. Uh, Hiroshima, uh, we know that it's a, it's a very famous city yeah, for the yeah, uh, very famous city. Okay, yeah. But for geologists, uh, it's very famous for the granite. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, maybe more than 70 70 percent area of Hiroshima city is occupied by the granite. The granite. So granite is a, a when it's a fresh, it's a very good material. Yeah. Or when we conduct the, the, the construction, and we use the, the granite to uh, decorate our houses. Yeah. But uh, if it is a water it becomes very dangerous. Yeah, it's very dangerous. So it actually is the source for debris yeah, flow. Yeah. So every year, every year, because it's in the source face to the to the to the to the inland to the uh, Seto uh, inland sea, yeah, the lots of rainfall occur there. But during the rainfall, lots of the will be triggered, triggered, yeah, in the city. So you can see the situation, yeah. The situation occurred in 1999. You can see the very big borders and move the just in front of the door of the house, yeah. You can see here, yeah. Even there is a channel, actually, this is a kind of major with a, with a check up, yeah, the contract kind of, here. But they cannot stop the reform. Okay, so you can see very small scale the reform or very small scale land side here. Of course, the very small scale land the reform, but even if it's small, yeah, it be built in this area. Yeah, small scale and killed in fact four persons in this very small area. Yeah. So actually, yeah, for all of the case, so very small scale. Okay, even another one, yeah. Another one. This one occurred in 2003 in the Thousand Japan in Kumamoto, yeah, Kumamoto property. Yeah, that's the over here, and the mobile for a very long distance, about two kilometers. Yeah, and the period you can see this is another body, another wider, wider river or body. Yeah, so the heart of our houses uh, has been uh, constructed around the another body, which is a village. Yeah, so the double flow passed. Yeah, through the village and yeah, past through the village and the killed lots of people here. Okay? So all of them is small scale but most of them are done on this sense. So we should understand what, what happened inside. Okay? The last case is occurred in the Philippines yeah, in 2006. This case is not small scale. It's a very big scale. Yeah, so this one we have to show you. Rainfall not only triggered a small scale on side, sometimes they can treat very big, very large scale yeah, outside. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, this is a this is source area of the of the of the landslide, and after field it deposit in this area, very wide. You can see this is a uh, this photo is uh, taken by a U.S. Army and it's a helicopter of a U.S. Army. You can see this is a village. You can reuse this village as a reference. Okay. Actually, if you're under the under the deposit of the landslide under the reform, there are two similar villages in this area. Okay, so because one of one one event, yeah, we got one event here, more than one thousand people, one thousand persons have been killed in one cases. Okay, so you can imagine how. Uh, actually, I when I give lecture to my students, I ask them. Told me what 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 they can see from this photo, yeah, from this photo. So what can you see from this photo? Yeah. So when I go there, when I check, when I see this photo, I said this is not the first time event in this area. Why? You can see the river, yeah, the river. It is in the, in the, in the uh, big curve in the, in front of this deposit. Yeah. So it means. Before this event, yeah, a similar feeling had occurred, and the deposit moved in the city area and make the curve of the of the yeah of the river. Okay, so just this kind of phenomenon, we can also predict similar feeling will occur again in future. Okay, so 
when we visit the, the when we visit the, the site, we are suggest that the, 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 the leader of this village and yeah, to prevent this one. Yeah, no no building in this area again. Yeah, you can use it for another uh, sports sports ground or something like like, like that. Don't build a house there. Yeah, because in the, 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 the similar phenomenon will be repeated in the near future. Okay. Yeah. So for the mechanism, yeah, uh, we started uh, because it's triggered, triggered by rainfall. So actually, see, you can see this is the data, and this is the, the data of the rainfall, and this one is the rated rainfall. Okay. So uh, for small scale landslide, generally, when the rainfall stopped, yeah, maybe you can observe for three or four hours, and then you can if no nothing happened, you can you can you can see it's safe. Yeah. But for this very large scale uh, landslide, yeah, so you can see rainfall continued, or bigger rainfall continued for about five days. So after that, some small rainfall, okay. But after the small rainfall on this day, yeah, on 17, uh, 17 uh, landslide. Okay. Yeah. So this also show the time lag. Or also we can uh, time lag can happen in the large scale landslide. Okay. So don't uh, follow. Uh, regular cases and for regular case, we have stopped, no problem. Yeah, we can we can stay we can safe. But for the large scale, we should also need to consider the timeline of this kind of phenomenon. Okay? Yeah. Then we uh go to, we went to Philippines, went to the site and make made a, a, a investigation. Yeah, we make a uh, uh, measurement, so this is the central line, okay, this is central line. This area. You can see this is a south area. Because, uh, here uh, is before before filler and after filler. Is, uh, all of this part has been uh, uh, moved and uh, it's a main scar. Yeah, and uh, it brought it this line. This line. Okay. Yes. So uh, we connect at this point. The, it's the top point. Connect the top point of the main scar and to the Reach point of the of the deposits that we can get. We call this angle is the apparent friction angle. The apparent friction angle. So the apparent friction angle here yeah, is just about a 10 degree. Yeah. Or the friction angle actually for soil is what we can see about 35 degree or at least 30 degree. Yeah. But why the apparent friction angle can reach 10 degree? That is very is very low. It's just because of this. Very low upright friction angle, the landslide move for long distance and for high velocity. So what happened inside? Yeah, why this angle is 10, not 30, not 35. Okay, or 30, not of 35. So we took sample and then we uh, conduct a ring shear test. Yeah, ring shear test. Later I will show you the, the behavior of the ring shear test. Yeah, it's very similar to the direct shear. But it can move endless. Okay, so we can observe the whole process of the nascent motion from the beginning to the to the non uh, distance motion. Okay, so you can see this is the time, and the time is the stress and the power the pressure. Uh, this is a shear displacement. Uh, this one is a shear displacement. Yeah. So we applied the power the pressure to simulate. Rainfall, similar the rainfall. You can see we, we change the scale here. This is a uh, 600 second, and we change the here. Uh, this is 40 40 second. Uh, actually, the velocity is the same. Yeah, it's, not, it's the same. But what happened? You can see here. Yeah, uh, when the shear displacement from zero and then start to accelerate it, it means failure occurred here. Okay, and what's the thing we can see. There's a very sudden increase of the power the pressure, yeah, or the water pressure. And something also happened in the shear resistance. Okay. Let's zoom in this part. We can see what we can see here. This is the shear displacement. Yeah. This is a normal stress keep constant. And uh, so it means at this moment, yeah, at this moment, when the shear displacement began to increase. The shear resistance comes down, yeah, make a drawdown suddenly, and uh, it comes from.
from uh, 280 to oh, almost zero. Yeah, almost zero. So if the shear resistance is zero, it means the solid material becomes to a liquid. Yeah, we call this is phenomenon is the infection, the infection. The soil becomes like water. Yeah, so you can water come over everywhere. Yeah, even 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 in a flat area. Yeah, so this is a very similar. Okay. And then most important thing is the increase of the forward pressure. Yeah? The forward pressure. So we applied the forward pressure in this way. Yeah. So about 150 kilopascal is the one we applied. But during this process, yeah, in this process, we can see uh, from 150, the forward pressure increased to more than 300. Yeah? So this part we call it. The, Excess forward pressure, just because of the excess forward pressure, the last time we have moved about this is because the excess forward pressure decreased effective homelessness and then decreased the shear resistance. Okay, so this is why, yeah, if there is no water, there will be no chance for the excess forward pressure generation. So this is why I say, even the land side triggered by rainfall. Even in small scale, they can move for long distance because they have a chance to get the higher excess power of the pressure. Okay, so this is, I think this is a key point. Yeah, key point. And this is the uh, effective stress pass. Yeah, uh, the, the, the effective stress pass. So we this is the feeder line. Yeah? Uh, we increase the water level from the start point, and then it will touch the feeder line. After fail, it, uh, it will decrease now. Uh, if we can measure the forward pressure correctly, actually it will move here and stop here. Yeah? Then we get the in the laboratory, uh, in the in the in the apparatus, we get the apparatus for example is just two degree. Yeah. But in the field we get a ten. So there are some uh, errors yeah? because in the field the generated forward pressure can be easily and the laboratory will uh, disappear, to disappear. Okay, so this is the reason for the uh, difference between 10 degree and 2 degree. But actually, in laboratory, we thought we, we can, uh, we, we show that, yeah, the upgrade, for example, is a cambi the cambi So this is the first part for the answer actually by the rainfall. The second part is nicely treated by a squid. So in this way, I would like to see the geological and the hydrogeological condition control the motion distance and the velocity. Okay. So uh, sometimes people will ask us, yeah, why does the local here, not there? Yeah. Why does the local fast and quick long distance? Yeah, there, here, and not there. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think if the same condition of the earthquake, yeah, uh, and uh, of the geomorphology. The geological condition and the hydrogeological condition control the motion distance. Okay, and the velocity. Of course, yeah, if you have a lot higher velocity, you will move around distance. Yeah, they have a, a very good relationship. So I would like to show you a very old example in Japan. Yeah. So this one is occurred in the 1792, yeah, in the southern Japan, in Nagasaki Prefecture. Yeah, Nagasaki. You can see uh, this is the mountain. Yeah, this is a big mountain. Something occurred in uh, in uh, 90, 90, 1991, yeah. And uh, in this uh, in this time, a landslide occurred here. Yeah, people believe it occurred here. Yeah. And uh, if you can, you have a chance to visit the city, the Shimabara city. You can find inland. Yeah, under, 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 in, in this area, there are lots of uh, small hills. Yeah? And in the seaside, if you go to the seaside, you can see a uh, lot of islands. Yeah? islands. So uh, geologists investigate all of these islands and the hills and find all of them at the deposit of the landslide uh, in, this event, in this event. So you can yeah, reconstruct that, 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 that theory. Is when landslide occurred here, it moved and deposited in this area. Yeah. Actually, this is a very famous Japanese city, 
uh, disaster cases. So uh, this call, they, they call it the uh, landslide uh, occurred in the Nagasaki prefecture, and the disaster has been brought to the opposite prefecture, Kumamoto prefecture. Okay, so in this side, actually because of this landslide, because of this landslide, the total is the total number of deaths, yeah, uh, sixteen thousand. So last side, in this side, killed about uh, ten thousand people, and it caused a tsunami. Yeah. So this is the side. This side is in this map. Yeah. So it caused a tsunami, and the tsunami reached the Kumamoto Prefecture this time. So this is the height of the tsunami trees. Okay. So that's the maximum height, which is about more than twenty meters. So because of the tsunami, more than uh, 5,000 people in this side have been killed. Yeah. So you can see, if uh, in that side, don't move for high speed, yeah, tsunami cannot be caused. Yeah. So we can see this. Of course, it will move for a long distance. So what's the problem and the, of the geological condition and the hydrogeological condition here? So I can see easily, the geological condition is this area is uh, covered by the armies, yeah, by the volcanic ash, ash something like that. Also lava, yeah. So it's a, also it includes pyroclastic bodies. Yeah, this is for the geological condition. Yeah. The second condition for the hydrogeological condition is is rich of water in this area. Yeah. If you have an experience in the in a volcanic area, you can find there yeah, are lots of uh, brown water yeah, on the side. Yeah. When I visit this uh, this city, we can see another city, lots of uh, lots of channels. Yeah, and they, they put the fish there. Yeah, and the, the tourists can enjoy the fish there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, the water just comes out from the mountain. Yeah, so this is a is a very special or typical phenomenon in the volcanic uh, deposit area. Okay, so there's two conditions: volcanic deposit and the rich Groundwater, or shallow and groundwater level, is the condition for the, this kind of uh, non traveling and non dropping landslide. Okay, so keep this in mind. You can see from now on, all of the cases they have the similar property. Okay, yeah, so we come to the new case which uh, occurred in the 1984 uh, yeah, in the Ontake Prefecture, uh, Ontake landslide. Uh, it occurred in this Grand Nagano Prefecture. Yeah. Nagano is famous for the Olympic wind again. Yeah, uh, so you can see, last side occurred in, in this side. Yeah, but after that, it moved for very long distance. Yeah, over a very long distance. So here, uh, and killed, and killed lots of people in this side. Yeah, there are lots of people this side. You can see this, uh, th this is the map. Yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, yes. So this is that they moved for 10 kilometers, yeah, of the 10 kilometers, and they killed 15 people in the village at the almost at, the, at this day. So very long distance traveling and killed people. Yeah. So when this happened, when this happened, nobody understand why. Yeah? We cannot imagine. Yeah, we cannot imagine. If you live in the in a in a mountain station, yeah, station, the distance from the station to this uh, campus. It's about a two kilometers. Yeah, you cannot imagine what happened in the station can have any effect in the in the campus. Yeah, but last time I looked at the ten kilometer far, it can come here and kill people. So the geologists and the researchers on that side, everybody just be surprised. And uh, actually, this is the case of Japanese scientists to study the rapid and non mountain So this is a special case. Okay. Yeah, so let's check the geological condition and the hydrogeological condition here. The same, yeah, you can see it's a volcano, yeah, so it's, a, it's a related to the hydro, to the, to the mechanic deposit and the parallel class deposit. Also, it moved around the valley, yeah, it's rich of water, yeah, rich of water. So, it coincides with the, the, the Nagasaki, the Shimamana case, yeah. Then, in 1995, uh, in the, 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 because of the Hanshin earthquake, the Kyoko Kanako earthquake, yeah, 
uh, fortunately you can see it occurred in January in the dry season. So not so many landslides has been triggered. So this is lucky for them. Otherwise, if it occurred in the rainy season, we can we can see you know the disaster will be given. Yeah. But even in dry season, two landslides have been triggered by the screen. Okay? So you can see this this one is a this one occurred in the in the Gulf in the Gulf Coast, in the Gulf Brown. Actually this this one is a refueled area. And refill the body. They refill the body. Yeah. So refill the body. It means what? The body is rich of water. Yeah. So because of the spray, water and uh, the loose material, refill the loose material. Yeah. With the uh, body groundwater. So I can say it's easy to understand in this case. Yeah. And here another case. Yeah. Another case. Yeah. Actually, around on this slope, there are lots of buildings. Lots of buildings here, yeah? but because of the earthquake, it moved here. You can see it moved, destroyed, and the buildings on this side and this side. Yeah. So, what has happened? Yeah, the researchers, when they visited, yeah, they found some water points yeah, in the in, around this side, especially here, especially here. Yeah. And to my private uh, consideration, I observed this figure. Yeah. I found a very strange phenomenon. Yeah. Even uh, yeah. So here, actually, here is the the, the water tank, the water tank for water supply. Yeah. We have a uh, I found a similar case in near 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 Manchester City, in the in the in the suburb area. There's a is a small mountain. On the top part of the mountain, there is a, a water tank. Yeah. After the water tank was construction, ten years later, yeah, well, uh, under the under the floor of the mountain, uh, lots of old houses, yeah, old houses, start to deform. Yeah, lots of the deformation. Yeah. and nobody can explain why when I put it. Yeah. I think this is the cause of the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we make some uh, investigation there and uh, contact. Uh, shear apparatus test. Yeah. So we applied normal stress shear stress wave. Yeah. And if this is a feed line, so this this, this part will make the line side hook make the slope fit. And this is the stress pass, the stress pass uh, of, of this feeling. So very similar. Yeah, we can see that if we check the effective stress pass, then it starts below the below the, uh, the feed line. Yeah. So here it's safe. Because of the spring, it touched the feeder line. And after feeder, it moved down, moved down, moved down, moved down. And the pilot stopped the heat. Yeah. So this, uh, we call this in the, uh, very similar to infection, but not exactly the, 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 the infection feeder. We call this uh, uh, sliding zone infection. So it's like the infection operates because of the shear, yeah, not because of the shaking, because of the shear, the difference. Yeah. So with the sharing, if uh, it should be fully saturated with a good condition of the water. Yeah. Another condition we found if the soil can be crushed, uh, if the soil can be crushed, it can also generate higher uh, amount of the excess oil pressure. Okay. Yeah. So actually this is a published paper you can if you have interest in. If I check my name and it I go we don't go to the text. I just show you some uh, good uh, photos. Yeah. So here, yeah, yeah, you can see in 2003, uh, very good photo. Okay. So this is a good landslide, I think, because it didn't kill people. Yeah. So you can see houses here, houses here. So they will be surprised, but no, uh, no, no, no damage on people itself. Okay. So all of the material moved out of from this source area. And then go to for long distance and the deposit in the rest part. Okay, so uh, the geological condition is uh, is also yeah, related to the to the volcano deposit, and also this is originally buried in the body. Now even now we can see. So the, in this photo we can see it's reach of the water. Yeah, so this is the sign of the water. Yeah, the sign of the of the water. So it means if I have a good have a enough. Geological condition and hydrogeological condition. 
Yeah, it's easier for them go for long distance and drive. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, is another case. Yeah, this is another case I would like to show you. In 2004, yeah, it's very strange. One earthquake <coughs> cost uh, more than 3,000 and 800 Einstein. Yeah, this is not, not common. Why? Because before this earthquake, just three days before the earthquake, a big typhoon passed to this level. Yeah, I mean, typhoon is not a wind. It, uh, uh, or it combined with uh, lots of rainfall. Okay, so because of the heavy rainfall, the ground has been saturated, and then when the earthquake comes, the lots of landslide and trip. Okay, so this is the case. And we can see lots of landslide now. Yeah, we go there to make like, an investigation. Also, we uh, read paper. Yeah, we wrote paper uh, on these cases. Okay, then uh, we I'd like to introduce a recent case yeah, in the Shimane prefecture in two, two years ago. Uh, we have a very not so strong yeah, magnitude is a 6.8. Uh, the damage also is not so big. And nobody has been killed here. And uh, we find some damages. Yeah. So surprise, to our surprise, they will get a report from the faction. And they say, yeah, Professor Wang, please come to see. And we have uh, two nice slides. Yeah. So we visit it. We go there to visit yeah. So we can see this one. And this one is very, very simple. Okay, so because of very steep slope, yeah, uh, because of the maybe because of the shaking, the slope of field and the deposit here. So this is the usual yeah, deposit in the degree about uh, 30 degree. Okay, but uh, they don't have, they cannot understand this case. Yeah, so a very small as they are occurring here, and the moved for very long distance. Yeah, very long distance. So I go there. Yeah, I find in this point and this point they built. Uh, two artificial ponds yeah, behind this cut of the landslide. Then, if you build a pond in the top of this slope, it's very dangerous. Yeah? Because the water will saturate the slope every day, every day. Okay? If the if earthquake occurs, even if it's not so big an earthquake, not so strong as then the slope of it can be triggered. Okay? So, this is the case. Actually, they built this. Uh, this uh, this uh, this pump, artificial pump, to what say to keep the soil and the slope. Yeah. So if the soil has been buried or brought by the rainfall, they can deposit it, and then water can comes out. And if, uh, the purpose is good for the environment conservation, but the result is not good. Yeah. So I suggest that you don't put the pump in front in, in top of that. Obviously, yeah. Another case, yeah, also occurred in 2018, but in uh, September, occurred in uh, Hokai, in Hokai. This time, even, yeah, also there is a, is a typhoon that passed in this area. The big typhoon make a very big damage in the Kansai airport, in Kansai airport. You know, uh, from the, after the finish of the Kansai airport, that is the first time for Kansai Airport to close the runway, the run pass. Uh, uh, so they only have two runways and close the one. It's a very big damage, a very big loss, that you can loss for Kansai Airport. Yeah. So this is a big typhoon past this area and reach the Hokkaido. Yeah. So when well, earthquake occur, yeah, we see this kind of phenomenon in the television. So I think okay, it's uh, the same. Yeah, uh, because of the typhoon and the earthquake. Yeah, this type. Then we go there, ask the local people, is this because of the hybrid rainfall? They say no, because uh, they only get 17 millimeter rainfall yeah, from the typhoon. Because when the typhoon reaches this area, then the rainfall becomes uh, very small. Yeah, very small. So we go there to some uh, investigation. Uh, you can see, yeah, this is the source area. All of them move up, yeah, this area move up, like this, yeah. We can see that it's very vertical, yeah, very vertical, okay. And then uh, we make a trench at this, at this pole, this part, and I find, yeah, so this is the hard road, hard, hard soil, and the landslide surface will be completely, okay. 
uh, we check it that yeah, it's uh, not enough time. So we just sample it, we find that yeah, this layer has a very good condition for green crush. Yeah, for green crush. We take it by hand, yeah, just uh, just uh, push it, push it. And then you the can see finally you get it's uh, like a pure uh, like free water, yeah, like flow. Yeah. If we if we just uh, push some with a hammer, it's a uh, very deep fine. <coughs> so this is the case yeah, for this land side. Yeah, this uh, this is the source part. Yeah, and both, you can see the material moved like a raft. A lot of people like like a carpet. Yeah, very thin and very beautiful. Yeah, very good. Don't disturb so much. Yeah, just the distance between the, the trees become uh, a little bigger. Yeah. So we can imagine during the sliding process, the shared distance should be very small. Otherwise. The steady mass will be disturbed. Okay, disturbed. So what happened in the in the in the steady zone? We can observe it's a fully liquefied. Yeah, we can see the liquefied steady zone left and the slow should the flow line like this. Yeah, it's flowing, it's flowing. Yeah, so you can see it's flowing like this. Yeah, the time time shift. Yeah, so actually this uh this is the first phenomenon the evidence. For us to observe the evidence of the sliding zone infection. Yeah. Before that, we just we see it's a concept of sliding zone infection. But this is the first time we see it's required. Yeah, it's really required. Okay. Yeah. So we do lots of uh, geological uh, investigation there. And recently, we published two papers in the Lancet Journal uh, uh, about this science. Okay. So finally, the last part I will just show you that's the motion simulation. Just our uh, 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 colleagues ask, what inside the Einstein simulation? Yeah, I just show you what's inside the simulation. It looks good, yeah, but what's inside? So this way, this is the principle uh, of the Einstein simulation. <coughs> so this model is proposed by uh, Professor Sasa in the Kyoto University, my uh, supervisor. And I get my own uh, study for my PhD degree. Yeah. So this is the model of my side. This part is sliding mass. This is the sliding surface. Okay. So they take the cut it in x y direction like this much, and they take this column and the analysis forces acting on this column. Okay. You can see the weight, red, red, and the weight, yeah, and, and, red, and the support force and the share the resistance. And the aspect. So this is the one of the force, the, the force yeah, acting on the one column. And then, according to the second law of uh, Newton, okay, Newton's for the motion uh, equation, then we get the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. Okay, so this is a basic principle. Then uh, we for the calculation we do actually this is for the x direction. But there is the y direction, okay? Because uh, yeah, y direction. And then if we put the result of this one and this one to this continuum for continuity equation, we can get the thickness change. Yeah, the thickness change with time. So if the the sliding mass yeah, change with time, then it means you can predict, you can simulate the motion of the land side. Okay. So the result will show you. The thickness they change is time. Okay? Yeah. But at that time, yeah, at that time, you can see the phi A is a known parameter. So if you want to calculate this, you are in you put yeah, put the phi A, for example, technically put it this name. So I ask uh, a supervisor. And so this is uh, is not good. If you know phi A is 10, we don't need to calculate. Yeah? If you tell, okay, then here, yeah, you don't need to complete. Yeah, so he they, they, they asked me, so what we should do? Then uh, we improve the fire, the how to calculate the fire, okay? So maybe no time for details. Uh, and, uh, so this is the share of the real share operators for the sharing, okay? It's very high speed, yeah, very high speed. Or very long distance. Okay, 
So this one, we can use this one to simulate Einstein motion. Okay, Einstein motion. Yeah. So what you can you can observe from this one, you can see the water becomes muddy and uh, it uh, increases and decreases. So this is the green crossing of grid and the excess power rate, water pressure has been generated and then dissipated to the size. Okay, so we can get a result from this. Then, uh, I also want to, because the Lucia operators, I don't know, not not, uh, not everywhere I think we have the habit, yeah, maybe until now, uh, only maybe maximum five yeah, <coughs> machines is available for first study. Yeah. So when I get my when I study for for PhD degree, I want to I try to yeah. For example, we don't conduct the untrained test. If we just uh, conduct the joint test, it's much easier. Yeah. If we can use the joint test results to predict the untrained test results, it will be good. Okay. So in my thesis, you can if you are interested, you can find this on uh, online. Uh, I uh, compare the result for drained test and undrained test. Okay, you can find this uh, this uh, shared displacement. The same. This is a sample height change and this is excess power pressure. So both of them we can separate it into three parts and three parts. For drained for drained condition, they have a initial negative that attached. It means the uh, uh, compression. Yeah. The second. It's an initial positive deletion that is negative. Okay? If it's a loose, it will be negative. If it's a very dense, it will be negative. Okay? That's positive. And the last part is a negative deletion due to the green crushing. Okay? You can see from the curves. And then for the drain condition, we can also get the similar, the, the same the three phase. The first the, the initial negative that attach uh, the power pressure increase. And then for second, yeah, if it's a uh, structure is loose, it will increase. It's a dense, it will decrease. And then for the last part, if the green crash is easy to be is easy to occur, then the excess origin power pressure will increase rapidly. If it's hard for green crash, it will keep just a constant. So very really similar like this. So it means if we study the great crushing problem yeah, of the material, we can predict whether it can move for long distance and high speed. Okay? Yeah. So uh, I just show you the yeah. Then uh, this this result is, is is good for the for for our model. Yeah. So with the initial apparatus, we get a very good result like this. Yeah. So this is effective robustness, the shear resistance. This is very different from the traditional test result. It means even if we applied different normal stress, but after very long shear displacement, finally all of them, all of the stress paths, they come to the same point. Yeah, they come to the same point. We call it is a steady state. So at a steady state, the shear resistance even depends on the initial normal stress. Yeah. So this result is very interesting. Yeah. So based on this result, I and the Professor Sasan propose the upgrade friction friction model like this. Yeah. So if this is the original point, the initial point state of a straw. So if uh, if it's dry because of a spring something like that, yeah, it will feel uh, touch the feeder line like this. In this case, landslide will not move for long distance. Okay, if uh, the sliding surface is pretty saturated and uh, the excess water pressure uh, can be generated like this, so the shear resistance will come to a lower position. Yeah. Okay, so it means landslide motion will like. Uh, Accelerate okay, because the shear resistance uh, is a uh, decrease very, very, very much. Okay, so after that, you're in the motion because the thickness will change. Okay, you 
can win thinner and thinner. It means the normal stress becomes smaller and smaller. If the normal stress becomes smaller and smaller, it means that phi A becomes bigger and bigger. So finally, it will be accelerating. Okay? And finally, it will stop. Okay? So I will show you the result. Yeah. So for the case, yeah, we will conduct some, uh, and yeah, this is a simulation, yeah, the process. Yeah. Go like this, yeah, I will show you, for example, for PSS, yeah, PSS is the, is the property for, to describe the hydrogeological condition. The PSS, when it's small, it's uh, really dry. When it's bigger, it's fully saturated, yeah, it's fully saturated. So 0 0.7 is over here. And if it's a 1.0, we can imagine we go for very long distance. Yeah. So this is the effect of the hydrogeological condition. Yeah. And also for the tau SS, yeah, when tau SS is bigger, it is just move a very <laughs> small distance and stop. And the way it becomes a big smaller, yeah, smaller, it move for very long distance. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we have a uh, we, we, we conduct for the simulation. Okay. And also, yeah, for the different volume, we said small scale and size move for small distance. Yeah. Big one move for long distance. So in this case, yeah, this is one hundred cubic meter. This is one thousand, ten thousand, and fifty thousand. I just show you. The biggest one, smallest. So this one is a fifty thousand. Yeah, every parameter is the same. I just change the scale. Yeah, and the result is quite really different. Okay. So it means our for this program can also yeah explain explain the relationship between the appropriate approach angle. And the volume of the sliding mass. Okay. So this is that uh, statistical data yeah, from the laboratory and the lecture case. Yeah. This is a simulation based design. So very we'll simple. Okay. Yeah. We also applied this one to the plant land slide, which occurred in uh, 1903 in Canada. So this is the south area, this is the border area, you can see the map. And there here is the one in the valley. The simulator like this, yeah. This is the parameter. Yeah, I don't need to take it. I will supply an uh, update and then PDF file to the website later. Okay, so we can observe uh, the simulation process. Yeah. This is from the south area, last slide moves up and reach the valley. And then with a higher speed, then comes up to the opposite. Uh, this is a gentle mountain. Yeah, gentle mountain. Okay. So compare this result with uh, compare this result with uh, with this uh, uh, yeah this actual actual area of the deposit yeah so almost the same almost the same. I don't know why they cannot show that at the same time yeah so also this uh, the, the velocity change yeah and the first absolute and then this and finally okay. so this is the whole process. Yeah, if you show somebody show you the simulation, actually, what happened inside like this? Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, this is the conclusion. Just uh, just uh, described. Yeah, I don't like to. Yeah. So finally, uh, thank you again and welcome, Shimane. Enjoy the special the tonight. Welcome. Thank you. So I think I used a lot of time. Actually, I want to stop earlier, uh, but uh, now we have to finish and uh, close this lecture. Thank you again for your kind and attention. Uh, attention. Uh, announcement for the for the farewell party will by Professor Sakai. Yeah. Actually, we're going to have a bus. The bus will depart from uh, the main gate of the university at uh, 5:45. Yeah, it means uh, 15 minutes ago. 
have a danger every minute. Okay? Yeah. So please prepare for the evening. Okay.